We are um, a company located in Heidelberg, Germany, and we've developed expertise in reading the response to disease using small RNAs, particularly microRNAs. They're about 22 to 30 nucleotide short nucleic acids, RNAs, that um, yeah, really fulfill a bunch of functions in physiology development and, and pathophysiology. And they actually, via Watson Crick base pairing, target other mRNAs and thereby control translation and thereby um, gene expression regulation, which really makes them master regulators of many, many processes. And we found that they're actually very good indicators of the body's state and with regards to health and disease. And yeah, our background is actually in lung cancer, where we have two programs. But more recently, we want to get into the very excited space of Alzheimer's. And yeah, we were fortunate to work together with the EPAD cohort, particularly Craig Ritchie and, and Gene Manson. And we're very happy to <clears throat> got to, to be getting access, or we had access already to 1,900 patients that are extremely deeply phenotyped. And what we did is we analyzed the small RNAs from the baseline samples of these patients. And then we there were several classification tasks that we, we performed, including predicting amyloid, predicting cognitive state, and predicting cognitive state within different amyloid strata. And yeah, this at CETA was the first time we're showing the data. It's still early. And there's more yeah, individual analyses that, that are coming up. But yeah, it's the first time we're showing the data. We yeah, believe that small RNAs could be a valuable addition to the ATN framework that's currently in use. And um, we think the RNAs are a very good reflector of what's going on in the periphery, both from an inflammatory immunological perspective, but also from a vascular health perspective. And um, this is sort of the 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 angle we are we are we are taking with with the project, and um, we find that we are we see the best performance currently when we try to predict cognitive state. So when we do an experiment of CDR zero point fives and CDR zero, so very mild cognitive impairment versus cognitively unimpaired, we do see performance and uh, of about yeah 0.75. And what's interesting is that that performance is even better when we are just looking at the CDR prediction within an amyloid positive population. And that's sort of quite interesting to us because one of the big questions in the field is why do people with the similar amyloid burden have very different outcomes, right? And they have very different dementia press pressures, and essentially, and um, and we believe this is where the ATN framework is sort of asymptotic and and limited at the moment, and where small RNAs could be an additional insight into the actual biology of these patients, and and yeah, aid in <clears throat> in understanding, you know, why they react so differently to the amyloid buildup, and. Interestingly, <clears throat> our performance is good in this amyloid positive MCI prediction, but it's less good in the amyloid negative MCI prediction. So that's interesting and suggests that there's potentially amyloid specific um, peripheral inflammation that we are seeing. <clears throat> so that's quite, quite, quite interesting that the models that we train on the amyloid positive MCI classification task do not translate to the MCI prediction in the, in the amyloid negative strata. And um, yeah, but it's early days and yeah, we, we need to look into the functionality of these small RNAs and um, yeah, but believe, yeah, it's robust results because it's coming from a very good prospectively collected, deeply phenotyped cohort. Yeah. With uh, very interdisciplinary um, phenotyping, both imaging, biomarker, CSF, and, um, and then very deep neuropsychological batteries that have been performed. So yeah, it's a very interesting entry point for us. And um, yeah, we are grateful to have yeah, been given access to the cohort, which is really yeah, a, a great cohort and grateful to the ADDF for, for funding the project. We've tried to look up the signatures um, yeah, in, in more detail. And there's sort of two things that uh, can be done. One is to explore the origin of the signature. We are working with whole blood, which means that we actually have a mixed cell multi-source um, signal in, in our signatures. And when we deconvolve the, the signatures into their original sources um, using some yeah, sorting studies, we do see that actually a fair amount is cell-free. Um, in whole blood, right? Whole blood has the plasma and the cells in there. So it's always a question, what is cellular, what is cell-free? And we do find, see a specific enrichment in the signature of cell-free small RNAs. We are currently tracing them back to the solid tissue of origin. 
Um, and we have one yeah, accessing one resource at the moment, which has different brain regions. So we want to see where they're coming from. And um, yeah, yet there is contribution also by by peripheral immune cells to the signal. And um, one thing that was interesting, we saw a enrichment in thrombocyte um, small RNAs. And um, yeah, there's sort of a some hypotheses in the field that yeah, blood clotting and um, yeah, vascular yeah, uh, or some sort of yeah, um, how do how to phrase this? Yeah, maybe blood blood clotting is a problem. Sydney Strickland from Rockefeller, yeah, has some interesting work on that. So again, it's very early days and functional studies with with small RNAs are quite difficult. So it's hypothetical at the moment, but interesting that we see, yeah, this this link to thrombocytes in in periphery in the periphery where, where where there's in cancer at least there's this concept that the platelets can be educated by disease and um, either are a reflector of disease or yeah could potentially yeah contribute even a, a pathological role.